In this video, we'll remind ourselves about vertical and horizontal lines, and also parallel and perpendicular lines. So vertical and horizontal lines, remember vertical lines are going to look a little something like this, and horizontal lines are going to look a little something like this. So this line is vertical, and this line is horizontal. So a vertical line, if you notice, all of the points on this line have the same x-coordinate. The x is never changing for the points on this line. And that means that the equation of that line is going to look something like x equals some constant. So if, for example, this line was 3 units over on the x-axis, all of those points would have x-coordinate of 3, and so the way that we would describe that line is by writing x equals 3. Alternatively, on this horizontal line, what we might notice is that all of the points on this line have the same y-coordinate. So if, for example, this line was 4 units up on the y-axis, we might call that line y equals 4, because every point on that line has a y-coordinate that equals 4. So the equation of a vertical and horizontal line is actually pretty simple. A vertical line has an equation that looks like x equals some constant, and a horizontal line has an equation that looks like y equals some constant. All right, what about parallel lines? Two lines are parallel if they never intersect. And one way that we can detect whether or not two lines are parallel is by looking at slope. So for example, if I were to look at the rise over the run of these two lines, so here's the rise over the run of this line. Again, remember, with a line, it doesn't matter which two points you pick to compute the rise over the run. So here's my run, and here's my rise. And if I do rise over run for this other line, maybe I'll pick this point and this point down here, then here's my run and here's my rise for the green line. Now what I might notice is that the run for the first line is the same as the run for the second line. And the rise for the, second line, for the first line is the same as the rise for the second line. So in fact, these two lines have the same slope. And that's not a coincidence. In fact, if we ever have two parallel lines, those two lines are going to have the same slope. So that's a way that we can detect whether or not two lines are parallel. We find their slopes, and if the slopes are the same, then the lines are parallel. And if the slopes aren't the same, then the lines aren't parallel. What about perpendicular? Well, you might be able to tell right away that if we compute the slopes of these two lines, they're not going to be the same number. But let's do it anyway and see what we can figure out here. So here's two points on this line. So here's my run on this line and my rise on this line. And let me compute rise over run for the second line. Maybe I'll pick this point and this point. So here's my run and my rise for my second line. Now what we might notice here is that these two rise over runs, these two slopes aren't the same, but we might notice that the rise for the second line, for the green line, is actually the same distance as the run for the first line. Those two numbers are the same size. And we might also notice that if we do the same thing for the run of the second line and the rise of the first line, that those two numbers are the same size. So it's almost like the rise and the run have switched places between these two lines. But it's not quite just that, that simple. You might also notice that the run for the first line is positive, this distance is positive, and this distance is positive. But the rise for the blue line is negative. That, the difference between these two y values is going to be a negative number. My line is decreasing, I have a negative slope. But my rise for my second line is positive. This line has a positive slope, it's increasing as I go from left to right. So not only have the rise and the run switched places, but the sign has changed as well. So what we see here is that the run, or the rise over the run, for the blue line is actually the negative of the run over the rise for the second line. 
So what we say here is that the slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. You might remember that the reciprocal of a fraction is what we get when we flip the fraction over. And that's exactly what we're doing here. This fraction has gotten flipped over, but it's also gotten a minus sign placed in front of it. So we can tell that two lines are perpendicular if their slopes are negative reciprocals. So for example, if the slope of one line is two-thirds, the negative reciprocal would be negative three-halves. If the slope of one line was, let's say, four, then the negative reciprocal of that would be negative one over four. If one of the slope of one of my lines was three-sevenths, let's say negative three-sevenths, then the negative reciprocal of that would be positive seven-thirds. So the way to detect whether two lines are perpendicular is to compute their slopes and to see whether the two numbers that we get are negative reciprocals of each other. And if they are, then the lines are perpendicular. They have a 90 degree angle formed where they meet. But if they're not negative reciprocals of each other, then the lines are not perpendicular.